continuing on here in our next video, we've created a project, added in the particular PLC and input output modules that we're going to use to, uh, to communicate. Then we've created um, I.O. tables and we've listed out kind of inputs and outputs that we're going to use that are available to us. Um, now down the bottom, I suppose, you can see any windows that are currently open um, that are available. So you see that can get kind of busy as we go through. So you can close them down when you're not using them and it'll get you back to ultimately your main kind of page here. So ultimately we can tidy up the views and toggle between them. So we looked at our input output tables. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up some codes. And our code is always within our program blocks here. And you'll see our main um, function, or sorry, our main kind of program block is where we write the main uh, parts of our code. Okay, that's the, I suppose, the program block that the CPU will always run first. Um, so it's always in the main that we'll start writing. So we're using ladder logic here. Um, you know, don't worry too much about the busyness, you know, the noise that's around here. There's a lot of things going on. Um, we're going to kind of digest a lot of the symbols and a lot of the functions, basic functions, um, at the start. So although there's a lot that we can do, don't worry too much about using, you know, a lot of these functions. We'll just be using the basic ones for the moment. So within ladder logic, um, the idea is we have a piece of code per rung on the ladder. So this is like a rung on the ladder. And we're always trying to get from one side of the ladder over to the other. We're trying to get energy flowing from the left over to the right. Um, and within each rung, we'll usually be controlling one output um, and making decisions based on certain inputs to turn on that output. So our input symbol is this input symbol here, normally open contact. And then our output symbol is this one here. So they're also found um, underneath the bit logic operations. You'll see normally open, normally closed, and some coils there for our outputs. Inputs always go here on the left hand side, and we can you know build them up, put multiple inputs in there, and outputs will usually go on the right hand side. Okay. So when we've dropped them in, um, we can start uh, typing in some code, and you'll see we can because we've already set up our I/O. It's very easy then just to map it in. We don't have to constantly be um, putting in those tags again to reference it. We have sort of given it a tag. Now, we don't have to register by the address. We've given it a tag, a name that we can call it very easily. So basically what's happening in this first line of code, very straightforward, is when I push the start button, our motor is going to become energized. Because look, if we follow the flow of um, power, power will get up to here. It's blocked at this position until we push the push button and then it flows through, energizes our coil, and turns on our motor. So very basic first line of code. Now, in ladder logic and Boolean logic, ultimately is what we're studying here, we um, can have a lot of different scenarios that go on. Okay, And one of those scenarios can be uh, what we call OR statements. So if we have two inputs, and what I can do is I can branch down an input underneath. Let's say I can put another input into here, and I can branch it back up. So this is still one rung on the ladder, because it's all connected in on one. Okay, They're branched in there. So what I can say here, let's say I put another input in. Um, what other inputs did we have? Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another, because I don't have ones that really kind of make sense there. I'm just going to add in another input table. Oh, we have a toggle switch. That's actually what I'll use. So if I type in toggle switch, what I now have is I have an OR scenario. So an OR scenario in the sense that the motor can be turned on from this pathway or it can get energy from this pathway. So we have two paths and that gives us an OR scenario. So ultimately, if the start button is pushed, yes, we can get pat and energy flowing through to here, turn on the motor. But if the start button isn't pushed and the toggle switch is pushed, we can still get energy flowing this way. If the both of them are operated, we'll still get power. That's an OR scenario. 
another type of function if I just say if I take that out we can put in is what's called an and scenario so let's say I put the toggle switch in here we now have an and scenario in the sense that one input and another input must be pressed in order to get the operation or in order to get the output so if you watch the, uh, the flow of power get power up to here okay we're waiting for the start button to be pressed start button gets pressed we get up to here and then we're waiting for the toggle switch to be pressed and once the two of them remain pressed in we'll get power if we open or turn off any one of them that will break the flow of power to the motor and it will turn off so we have an AND and an OR scenario. And they're two very powerful concepts um, to start off with, because we can start you know, doing safety features in the sense that two buttons need to be pressed before we turn something on. And we can do IF statements in the sense that we can have different pathways to how we can operate um, our motor. So we've a lot of control just in them basic steps. Another great piece of code we'll see is what's called um, a latch and the latch is super important because if you look at this line of code right if we push the start button the motor stays on but if we take our finger say off the start button the motor will turn off which isn't ideal if we have to stand there and you know keep the button pressed in order to get the motor to stay on so what we can do is we can set up what's called a latch and if a latch looks like this and it's we use this idea of using an output as an input now that may not make a whole lot of sense at the moment, but ultimately the, the PLC will know if it's turned on this motor or not. So what we can use is what we call like a monitoring bit of that output, right? So I can call my motor again, right? And ultimately this input will monitor whether this output is turned off, on or off. If it's on, this switch closes, if it off, it opens. Okay, so watch what happens. If I branch that back in, right? If I turn on my start button, power can flow through here. The motor hasn't turned on yet, so it can't get power from here. Once the motor turns on, then its monitoring bit will turn on. So this input will close because it's kind of matching what the, the motor is doing because they're both the same. And we're using that to feed into the system. We're kind of looping it back around in the sense that it will constantly keep getting power from this pathway. So once it turns on, it can go in this pathway now. And even if I turn off my start button, we can still get power through this pathway. And that's what we call a latch. And that motor will stay on now forever, ultimately, until we cut the power to the PLC, because that stayed on. So the final piece to the latch puzzle is we need somewhere to turn off the motor because eventually we're going to want to turn it off. And we use this thing here called a normally closed contact. And what a normally closed contact does is it starts in the closed position, just like a closed switch. So when power gets to here, if the button is not operated, it's already closed. So the power, you can see that line, it's already able to get through to it. And then if this switch does get operated, it opens so it works in the reverse to this here we're waiting for it to be pressed and then power can flow through here power can flow through and when it's pressed it breaks the power so that can be our stop button in the sense that our stop button's here so let's let's talk through it again push the start button power flows this way to the motor okay before the start button is pressed it won't be able to get through this pathway okay because the motor hasn't turned on yet. Start button is pressed, goes to our motor, turns it on. Now this input that's kind of monitoring what our motor is doing now gets turned on. Okay. So we're using an output as a kind of input. So we don't need to create a new out, uh, new input because we're still using that same tag. We're just kind of monitoring it. So now power can constantly flow through here because remember we've this normally closed switch. Um, so power can keep flowing through there because it's starting off in the closed position and then if I push the stop button it breaks the power supply in this pathway to the motor and ultimately turns on or turns off our motor sorry so a very useful um, piece of code here is what's called the latch all right and um, always in this position in this kind of area is going to be what starts the latch 
So you can have multiple kind of information in this portion, in this kind of top left piece of the code. Over here is ultimately what the output turns on. Down here is what keeps the latch on, and it's going to always be the same as this, as the output. And then this portion in here is what's going to break our latch, or when we want to turn off our latch. So some basic Boolean log logic there, um, looking at and, and scenarios, or scenarios. This is also what's called a not scenario. So what it does is it inverts the power supply. So if you're getting a logical zero in there, you'll get a logical one coming out. If you put in a logical one, you'll get a zero coming out. Um, if, you, if it helps to think about it like that. Mostly people think about it as normally closed switches in the sense that we wire and that is closed, so power will flow through, and if we push it, we'll open it up. And then we also looked at um, a latch, how we can keep an output turned on by ultimately using the output as an input back into the system. So I hope that makes sense for you.